You're about to experience life as one of the ocean's most terrifying nightmares, and you don't even know it yet. Right now you're just a translucent blob, smaller than a rice grain, tumbling through pitch black water while every single creature around you is trying to turn you into a snack. You have no idea that in a few years, you'll be the reason fish check under their beds before they sleep. Welcome to your new existence as a bobbit worm, where you'll spend your entire life as a living bear trap with commitment issues. Your journey starts not with a cozy nest or a protective parent, but as part of a massive underwater snowstorm of eggs and sperm mixing in the open ocean, romance at its finest. You're one of millions of fertilized eggs now drifting wherever the current takes you, playing the world's most dangerous game of chance. Most of your siblings are already becoming someone's lunch. A jellyfish here, a small fish there, it's an all-you-can-eat buffet, and you're on the menu. But you've got something they don't see coming. Deep in your microscopic body, your cells are already plotting. They're building the blueprints for jaws that will snap shut faster than a camera shutter, for a body that can grow back from almost nothing, and for a hunting style so brutal that even sharks would take notes if they could write. For now though, you're just trying not to get filtered through some whale's baleen. After days of this aquatic lottery, you finally feel the pull to sink. Your body starts changing, developing segments and tiny bristles. Time to find some real estate on the ocean floor. You burrow into the soft sediment, and congratulations, you've just moved into your forever home. Well, not exactly a home, more like a vertical tunnel where you'll spend the rest of your days playing the ultimate game of hide and seek. Your new digs aren't exactly spacious. You're basically living in a tube barely wider than your own body, which right now is about as thick as a piece of spaghetti. But hey, at least the rent is free. You start secreting mucus to reinforce the walls of your burrow. Gross? Maybe? Necessary? Absolutely. Without it, your whole operation would collapse faster than a sandcastle at high tide. Now for the fun part. Figuring out how to eat without leaving your hidey hole. You poke just the tiniest bit of yourself above the sand, your five antennae twitching in the current. These aren't just for show. They're your early warning system, your dinner bell, and your only connection to the world above. A small worm wiggles by, and boom. You strike with jaws that snap shut faster than you can blink. First meal secured. Not bad for someone who just learned they had jaws five minutes ago. Weeks pass, and you're getting the hang of this ambush predator thing. Your body grows longer, adding more segments like you're collecting achievements in a video game. Each segment comes with its own set of bristles. And oh boy, these aren't your average bristles. They're loaded with toxins that make anything that touches them think twice about messing with you again. You're basically a living electric fence that also happens to eat things. But growing up means growing problems. Other bobbit worms have claimed territory nearby, and the ocean floor suddenly feels a lot more crowded. You can sense their vibrations through the sand, each one marking their turf like underwater gang members. One night, you feel something brush against your extended antennae. Another worm is trying to muscle in on your spot. The sand erupts as you both lunge, jaws snapping. You twist and coil, each trying to get a grip on the other. After what feels like hours but is probably just minutes, the intruder retreats. Your first territory battle. 1. As you hit your teenage phase, if you can call it that when you're a worm, you're now about 3 feet long and feeling pretty good about yourself. Your hunting game has seriously leveled up. No more tiny worms for you, you're going after the good stuff. Small fish, shrimp, even the occasional crab that makes the mistake of scuttling too close to your lair. Your striking speed is now legendary in your little corner of the reef. Well, legendary to you, anyway. You've developed a neat trick. You can sense the slightest vibrations in the water above your burrow. A fish, swimming by, creates tiny pressure waves that your antennae pick up like underground radar. You wait, perfectly still, until it's directly overhead. Then, wham! Your jaws shoot out of the sand like some kind of nightmare jack in the box. The fish doesn't even have time to register what happened before you're dragging it down into your burrow. Dinner is served, and you didn't even have to leave your house. Life continues like this for years. Hunt, eat, grow, repeat. You're now pushing six feet long, and your burrow has become an elaborate network of tunnels. You've even got multiple exit points, because a smart predator always has a backup plan. Sometimes you venture out at night, your iridescent body shimmering in the moonlight that filters down through the water. These midnight crawls aren't just for fun, you're looking for a mate. 
Finding another bobbit worm interested in romance is about as easy as finding a needle in a haystack. If the haystack was the size of the ocean and the needle was actively trying to hide from you, when you finally detect the chemical signals of a potential partner, you release your own pheromones into the water. It's basically underwater tinder, but with a lot more swimming and a lot less swiping. The whole mating thing happens fast. You both release your goods into the water and hope for the best. No candlelit dinners, no long walks on the beach, just a quick exchange of genetic material and back to your respective burrows. Romance isn't exactly your species' strong suit. Years roll by, and you've become a true monster of the deep. At nearly 10 feet long, you're one of the biggest predators in your neighborhood that nobody ever sees coming. Your hunting is now so efficient it's almost boring. Fish, squids, even small octopi, they all fall victim to your lightning-fast ambush attacks. You've got the whole thing down to a science, but here's where things get weird. You're practically immortal, or at least as close as any worm can get. Lost a chunk of your body in a fight? No problem. You'll grow it back. In fact, if something manages to cut you clean in half, congratulations. Now there are two of you. Your front half will regenerate a new back end, and your back half might just grow a new head and become a whole new worm. You're basically the ocean floor's version of a comic book villain who just won't stay dead. One day, you're doing your usual lurking routine when you feel something, grab your back end. Before you can react, chomp. A good three feet of you is gone, taken by some passing predator. You'd be panicked if you had the capacity for panic, but instead, you just retreat deeper into your burrow and wait. Sure enough, within weeks, you're already growing back what you lost. Meanwhile, somewhere out there, your other half is probably doing the same thing. You've just accidentally created your own clone army of one. The years blur together in an endless cycle of hunting and regenerating. You've been bitten, chomped, and torn apart more times than you can count, but you always bounce back. You're like the universe's most disturbing rubber band. No matter how much you stretch or break, you just keep snapping back to form. At this point, you're not even sure how old you are. Time doesn't really mean much when you can regenerate indefinitely. You could be decades old, maybe even pushing a century. Your burrow has become a complex maze that would make any architect jealous, with chambers and tunnels extending in every direction. Then one night, while you're doing your usual antenna wiggle, waiting for dinner to swim by, you feel something different. It's not prey, it's... yourself? Another piece of you from who knows how many years ago has grown into a full worm and accidentally tunneled into your territory. You're literally about to fight your own regenerated butt from five years ago. The battle is fierce, made even weirder by the fact that you both have identical fighting styles. After all, you're basically fighting your own memories. The sand settles, and somehow you've both retreated to opposite ends of the tunnel system. Now you're roommates with yourself. Every hunting session becomes awkward as you both shoot out for the same prey. You're stepping on your own antenna, literally. Eventually, your other self digs away to find new territory, probably to go create even more versions of you somewhere else. This is your life now, an endless loop of eating, regenerating, and occasionally running into previous versions of yourself. You're not just one worm anymore. You're a whole dynasty of yourself scattered across the ocean floor. Some might call it immortality. You'd call it Tuesday, except you can't tell what day it is because you live in a hole. Right now, as you sense another fish approaching overhead, you prepare to strike once again. Your jaws tense, your body coils, and... Wait, is that another you popping out of a nearby burrow going for the same fish? Great. Now you're competing with yourself for dinner. Again.